Welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be doing a video about Neo. But before I start the video guys, please make sure to leave a like on the video below. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Join the family guys. Let's go on our investor journey together. So today we're going to be doing a video about Neo. Where I think personally Neo is going to be going in the next couple weeks. Some good news that Neo's dropping out and obviously where I see the future of this company going. Now, if you guys don't know what Neo is, Neo is basically an EV company based out of China, uh, specifically, you know, a Chinese rival to Tesla. They specialize in luxury EV brands. Now, you know, there's been a lot of controversy when it comes to this overall stock. I mean, Neo, we know that Neo has been hit really hard if you've been, been invested in the company for a while. So taking a look at the one-week chart, we actually had a decent run this week, up 20%, which is really, really good. This was obviously followed by like a lot of good news that Neo had. Over the course of the week, Bank of America, you know, set their neutral to a buy rating with a price upgrade of $26 by the end of the year. Um, we also know that Neo is dropping a new SUV. We also have some exciting news for tomorrow as well. Neo is actually getting listed in the Singapore Stock Exchange, which should hedge against the delisting risks that a lot of people have been talking about over the you know past couple of months. I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that's holding Chinese stocks back. We do know that China and U.S. are in talks right now about the whole auditing situation. If China is going to allow, you know, the 200 companies, if the U.S. to audit their books. But taking a look at it from a bigger perspective, Neo being on the Singapore exchange does put a good ease to the hedging of the delisting risk. So that's obviously a good sign. We also know George Soros and his hedge fund. He picked up a bunch of Neo and sold his stakes in GM and Fisker. So this is a big sign because Soro himself, you know, he's a big time investor. He has probably one of the b biggest hedge funds out there. So, you know, him picking up Neo, obviously there is a lot of bullish signs behind that as well. Kathy Wood picking up Neo. And we actually got an interesting statement from China that they're, you know, easing down on the Chinese tech the crackdown that they imp implemented I think last year just so it can help the economy grow once again. But in other news as well, we also had JP Morgan come out basically saying, you know, which he called JP Morgan called Chinese assets uninvestable a couple of months ago, but they came out with a statement that, you know, they're actually rotating money into Chinese stocks. I think the Chinese economy in general is doing a little bit better than the U S is right now. Obviously we're, we're struggling with super high inflation and raising interest rates and stuff like that. So I'm not going to lie. The United States is kind of a mess right now, but a lot of people are starting to rotate money into Chinese assets, stocks like Neo, Alibaba, Xpeng, JD.com, Tennyson, stuff like that. So, you know, this is some very good stuff for Neo. We do know that Neo has been struggling because of the Shanghai lockdown, but starting June 1st, I believe they're easing up or completely getting rid of the lockdown. You know, Z, he's pretty adamant about zero tolerance COVID. So he's pretty stuck in his ways. And although it does hurt in the short term, that's just kind of how he's always done it. But there's a lot of good catalysts coming for Neo stock in the near future. A lot of people are holding a lot of, you know, shares of Neo stock wondering, is this stock ever going to go back up? Is this stock ever going to recover? I'm tired of sitting here and watching the stock trade in a sideways motion. We've been trading between 10 and $20 since basically February, January of this year. And obviously guys, you, you know, there's a lot of factors to consider. Like I said, China going through a full lockdown. On top of that as well, we do know that right now, you know, the, the stock market in itself, guys, is not really doing well right now. It is not just specific to Neo. There's a lot of stocks out there that are making new lows. You know, we saw the S&P 500 continuing to crash. You know, Jerome himself is basically, you know, people are waiting to see if he's going to get more aggressive on raising interest rates. Interest rates, he basically has said before that, you know, 0.75 and a one and a full point hike is off the table, but you never know if he sees that the 0.5 hike is not doing anything for inflation. He may get more aggressive. So right now we're trading in a range. In my personal opinion, do I think that we're close to a bottom with Neo stock? I absolutely do. Some people think we're going to fill the gaps at eight and $9. I'm pretty certain in my personal opinion that I don't think we're going to be able to drop that low. I don't think Neo stock is going to drop that low. I do see a huge run coming for Neo in the next coming weeks. And this is just obviously my personal opinion. It's not financial advice, but I know that this stock does have the room to run. We've seen it time and time again. Like I said, I know a lot of people have lost their patience with Neo stock, but for me, I've lost a lot of money on the stock. I'm still holding. The company is still growing very quick. We have, you know, a new SUV this month. 
We have deliveries and earnings at the end of the month as well. We have the ET5 sedan and Neo Park, you know, coming later this year. So really analyzing what Neo's got going for it. I do expect increases in their deliveries you know, in the months of June, July, August, September to start increasing a lot more. Hopefully they can start hitting the numbers around the 15,000, 16,000 range right now. I believe their highest deliveries is pretty close to 11,000. Obviously April and May are probably going to be lackluster months in my personal opinion, but this is just due to COVID. But you guys have to understand this has nothing to do with demand. Like I said, Russia-Ukraine war, you know, is definitely messing up supply chain issues. We're still going through somewhat of a chip shortage. So there's a lot of external factors that are really driving out, you know, the trading patterns and a lot of different companies. Like I said, on top of the market, sentiment is just not really good right now. People don't know where to put their money. People are scared. People are thinking that, you know, we're going to actually start to continue to tumble. This video isn't about whether I can predict a market crash because we could have already seen the bottom and I would have no absolute idea, you know, but... I continue to add on the dip. I continue to dollar cost average into NEO because I know that this company is going to be absolutely humongous. I know this company is going to do great things. And my personal price prediction for the end of the year, coming from a bearish standpoint, if the worst comes to worst minimum, I still do think NEO will hit $30 at an absolute minimum by the end of the year. And I'm talking if like their deliveries continue to, you know, basically not be as well because of lockdowns or restrictions or supply chain issues. If the market sentiment continues not to get better and overall conditions, and we're still stuck in a bear market, no one knows how long we're going to be stuck in a bear market for, but best case scenario, my personal opinion, I do think that Neil can hit the 40 to $50 mark. If we start, you know, with the opening of Neil park and they start having like better quarter two, quarter three earnings, that's going to be kind of towards later the year, the release of the ET5 sedan, the opening of Neil Park, you know, and if the US and China can finally come to an agreement of about the auditing guidelines that they have on the stocks of the New York Stock Exchange. So there's definitely a lot of different factors that are definitely going to play in the rotation of NEO. NEO in general does follow the market, you know, so if the market's not doing well, NEO generally doesn't do well either. I've noticed, you know, NEO generally has similar trading patterns, sometimes a little bit more green, sometimes a little bit more red than the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So, you know, if the, if the SPY, you know, for example, we started off yesterday as a pretty good day, but we know that the S&P almost crashed 3000 points yesterday. Ultimately, NEO did have to go down with it along with a lot of other stocks so neo was down about five percent making up about 3.51 percent of that today we are seeing a little bit of green i do expect green in the coming weeks as well as we do have the singapore exchange we do have the release of their new suv and you know come june 1st like i said shanghai is finally letting go of their crackdown so this is there's a lot of huge catalysts that are definitely going to be driving neo stock up in honestly into the 20s in my personal opinion but obviously we're going to have to see but nonetheless even in the short term turbulence guys i'm still holding neo stock i still believe in this company i know this company is going to do great things but with that being said guys that's all i really have to say about the video you guys let me know down in the comments below guys what you think about neo stock do you guys think neo stock can hit 40 to 50 dollars by the end of the year if you guys own neo stock how many shares do you guys own and what's your average? I'm always very curious to know. With that being said, guys, thank you. Have a great day.